Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV. I'm Shannon, and today on the show, the worst comic I have ever read. Stay tuned. Alright guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today we're taking a look at the worst comic I've ever read, Wolverine vs. Spider-Man. This is obviously from Marvel Comics. It is from March of 1995. It starts out with Spider-Man swinging through New York, and he's talking about how basically... Everyone in Peter Parker's life is also connected to Spider-Man's life. There's a lot of um, pros here. Sorry, there's background noise going on. So, in the first page alone, this reads like a fifth grader writing a comic book. My life's taken a very surreal turn of late. These preposterous coincidences are getting out of hand. My former high school worst enemy turned best buddy Flash Thompson is dating my former foe turned partner, former love interest, the Black Cat, a.k.a. Felicia Hardy. It's all part of some crazy revenge scheme of hers to get me away from my wife, Mary Jane. Also, my former foe turned semi-friend, Thomas Fireheart, a.k.a. the Puma, recently bought the paper I work for, the Daily Bugle, from J. Jonah Jameson, my ongoing concern. Added to that, my former neighbor and Jonah's former secretary, Glory Grant, accidentally killed her werewolf boyfriend trying to shoot me. Mary Jane used to date Flash and Harry Osborn. Flash and I both dated Harry's wife, Liz. Liz is related to the Molten Man, who recently returned. Harry's dad was the original Green Goblin, who killed my old girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, who also dated Flash. Flash saw Betty Brant, another former girlfriend of mine, and former secretary of Jonah's, while she was married to Ned Leeds, who turned out to be the Hobgoblin. I still have trouble buying that one. And then he sees Wolverine, or makes the assumption that it's someone dressed up like Wolverine, because I guess prior to this, Wolverine was assumed dead. Uh, it was broadcast on TV, uh, something happened, and... Yeah, everyone thought he was dead. Apparently, no one knew about Wolverine's healing factor. I don't know. But Wolverine is, had tracked this uh, group of mutant criminals to this warehouse where they had kidnapped a teenage mutant and her father. A very powerful teenage mutant. The warehouse is the exact same warehouse that Spider-Man tracked the burglar to. The burglar being the man who killed Uncle Ben. Um, so him and Wolverine, he attacks Wolverine without think, without really asking, without really any interaction at all. He just assumes it's someone playing dress up in Wolverine's pajamas. You know, eventually Wolverine makes him realize that he's the real deal, and they team up. So the Wolverine versus Spider-Man title is very misleading because it's like a two to three page fight that isn't even really a fight because Wolverine isn't trying to hurt Spider-Man. So anyway, they attack, they go into the warehouse where they're met by some guns, some remote control laser guns, which warns the group of bad guys of their presence. The leader of the group is known as Critical Mass. He kind of looks like the blob. And it turns out he's one of Peter Parker's old bullies from middle school. Not only that, but there's a guy in the background, one of the criminals, who looks an awful lot like the burglar. Right here. And he makes a comment, let me off the wall crawler. I owe him for what he did to my brother. 
And then later, Spider-Man knocks him out. And it turns out to be Peter Parker's dentist. And he makes the connection that he looks just like the burglar. He's dressed like the burglar. Apparently, this is the burglar's brother. Uh, anyway, they they win because the teenage mutant uses her powers and teleports her, her father, and Wolverine away while Spider-Man escapes and her powers basically incinerate the criminals. And then Peter Parker, at home with Mary Jane, goes into this whole mental breakdown type thing where he thinks Wolverine was just a ghost because his camera didn't capture any pictures of him. He just, let me read this. This doesn't make any sense. No shots of Wolverine, none of Arnie, Arnie's face, and none of my dentist. That's impossible. What actually happened? It's like some crazy dream. Am I still in a daze from the explosion or am I just cracking up? It wouldn't be the first time. Was Wolverine really there? Was it a ghost? I don't know. Nobody but me survived the explosion. No bodies were found in the rubble. This is getting too weird. Everybody I know turns out to be or is related to one of my foes. Harry, his dad, my old costume, Professor Warren, Ned Leeds, Frederick Foswell, Gene DeWolf's brother, Liz's stepbrother, Glory Grant's boyfriend, and now Flash's girlfriend, Arnie, my, and my dentist. It's too much. Too many people. Too many coincidences. Is it me, Mary Jane? Am I causing this? Is it that my being Spider-Man somehow causes all of my casual acquaintances to turn into superpowered bad guys? I don't think I can take much more. I don't know what's real anymore. I don't know who to trust. Not you, Mary Jane. Please, not you. I couldn't take that. You're the one chunk of reality for me to hang on to. Please, Mary Jane, help me. I'm real, Peter. You are. We've gone too far for me to give up on you now. You're just a little stressed out. We'll make it through all this. Trust me. You're going to be fine. I promise. Trust me. I love you. <laughs> Reads like a fifth grader wrote it. And that's no insult to fifth graders. But it really makes me wonder how this passed editorial. I understand that writing wasn't the greatest early on. But this was in 1990. Writing had gotten so much better at that time. And this just reads very horribly. Not much happens at all really it's just the the title is very misleading for one i expected so much out of this comic i've been holding on to it in my collection for quite a while i hadn't read it until right before i did this video it is very very disappointing i expected so much more out of a comic that says wolverine versus spider-man and it it's just it was horribly horribly executed let's see who did the artwork and writing for this now normally most comics will have a panel or something usually on the first or second page separate from the information down here that tells you who the writer was who the artist was the inker colorist and all that and the colors are okay the ink is okay i'm not a fan of the pencils though and i am definitely not a fan of the writing this was a variably very horribly written comic uh, originally published in marvel comics presents number 48 49 and 50 uh copyright 1990 so this did come out earlier than i thought but still five years they were writing so much better in 1990 also Published by Marvel Comics, Terry Stewart, President, Stan Lee, Publisher, Michael Hobson, Vice President, Publishing Office, Publication. All right, so pencils were done by Eric Larson. Inks were done by Terry Austin. It's not known who did the colors. Uh, letters were typeset. Um, editing was Kelly Corvis and Terry Cavanaugh. Script was done by Eric Larson. Colors, Gregory Wright. Inks Joe Rubenstein, pencils Eric Larson. I don't know. Uh, from I've been out of the comics loop for a while, but from my recollection, Eric Larson is so much better than this. And the fact that he wrote this and drew it. I mean, Wolverine is drawn pretty good, but Spider Man is just. I don't know. I, I don't like spider-man's art style in this comic um i mean the cover looks really good 
I really like that cover, but... And according to uh, mycomicshop.com, this comic, in the condition it's in, which is very fine to near mint, it pr really crisp. Um, I hadn't taken it out of the bag and board. Um, in fact, whenever I first opened it, it wouldn't go much further than that. I mean, even though I opened it all the way, um, it didn't damage the spine at all. It's worth about eleven fifty, eleven dollars fifty cents. Not bad. I think that's overvalued, though, given that the story is crap, the writing is crap. Very juvenile writing, I, I, I really have to say. But yeah, the cover, the cover is great. I love the cover. Uh, it stands out quite a bit. But yeah, have you read? Have you guys read this one? Let me know in the comments. What did you think of it? These comic reviews are to be more, are meant to be more relaxed. Um, kind of like just talking to a friend or an acquaintance about comic books. Um, something to keep the channel alive. Um, cause I just don't have the time to do history and origins right now. If I do, it's going to be like once a month or something like that. Um, but I do miss co talking about comics. Uh, I had a friend in high school that I used to talk comics about all the time with. Uh, and then when we started the channel, John and I would talk comics all the time. Uh, John is now gone. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, tell me what you think. Um, am I remembering Eric Larson? correctly uh is he actually better than this or am i misremembering is his writing uh like this across the board let me know if you enjoyed that video make sure to check out one of these two playlists for more videos just like the one you just watched i've been shannon this has been come again tv the only place on youtube where all geek culture collides take care geeks